Hey everyone, it's Yuran from Tiger Beetle. I want to give you a quick tour of our deterministic simulator, how we test Tiger Beetle for mission critical safety. Um, Tiger Beetle is a distributed database. Uh, I think the first thing when we think of, you know, testing distributed systems, distributed databases is chaos engineering. Uh, and the reason is that uh, distributed systems are really complex. There's many components and a lot of the components are pretty reliable. The hardware is pretty reliable, but it's when things break um, that you enter the danger zone, that you can actually lose data. You know, how do you test these systems for all combinations of failures where the failures are rare? So what we do in Tiger Beetle Simulator, like everyone else, is we do a lot of chaos. We inject faults. Um, um, so fault injection, you know, and the, the problem though is that and so this is the first insight, fault injection. Let's mess with the network, mess with everything, crash things, just inject so much chaos and check that everything works. Um, the problem though, again, is that, and this is the second insight, is that if you find an interesting bug, like the Y2K bug, it might take you decades to find it. You, know, you have to run the system, the real system, you have to run it in real time for years and years and years, and then you hit that 30 year bug or that 60 year bug. Um, you know, uh, so the problem is, again, you can do fault injection, but it still takes you a long time to find the bug. And once you found the bug, you, you know, you, you know, it's there, but how do you find it again while you're trying to fix it? So you can tell your colleagues, I know there's a bug there. Can you try and reproduce it? And they'll say, okay, I'm trying. You say, no, no, you need this like funky production hardware also to reproduce it, or you need fast storage NVMe or slow storage or faster. And how do you reproduce these things? How do you, because, you know, printf debugging, like we all do, you you, you debug the, the 10 year bug, you have to debug it, you know, 10, 20 times as you binary research it. So that's not gonna take you a century and we're all dead. Um, so obviously I'm just, you know, hyperbolating, but, there are bugs that just really take a long time to find. And once you find them to, to replay them, you, you can't replay in real time. So um, th this is kind of the problem. How do you reproduce? Um, second insight. So Tiger Beetle is not just a distributed database. It's a deterministic distributed database. So we were very careful. You know, here is Zig Comtime constructing a replica type for us. This is a distributed database type. But what's unique about this type is it's deterministic. So not only the business logic, which is usually the case, um, but the message bus. So um, send and receive a message. Um, all the code in Tiger Beetle around, you know, in the implementation of storage engine, the whole LSM engine. This is why we didn't pick rocks or level is because we couldn't test them deterministically. So we wrote our own storage engine that is deterministic. So given the same storage latencies and things, it, it produces the same answer. There's no issues with thread scheduling or um, things like that. So it, all the abstractions that could be non-deterministic, we have abstracted them. And then what you can do is you can now swap out IOU ring and storage with the simulators in memory storage or swap out a TCP uh, message bus with simulated uh, networking. Even the clock source of Tiger Beetle is, can be swapped out. And here's the third insight is that um, we decouple time in the simulated world um, from real world time, which makes sense because really simulated world and real world are two different worlds. So we can speed up time in the matrix. Um, the simulator can tick time in a while true loop. Uh, so the passing of time in the simulator, if you run the simulator for three seconds, you've actually simulated 39 minutes on average. You run it for a day and you've had two years of test time. Um, so this is immensely powerful. Three insights, fault injection, chaos engineering, but also deterministic chaos. Can we replay the chaos? Can we share chaos with our friends and colleagues? Uh, but finally, third, third insight is, can we speed up chaos? Can we get uh, centuries of chaos uh, in a day? Uh, you know, through massive parallelism, running these simulators on many machines. Um, so these are the three insights behind Tiger Beetle's deterministic simulator. And of course, a lot of this was pioneered by Foundation DB. Um, we've really looked to them and also uh, the work at Dropbox in deterministic fuzzing. Um, so again, it's, a, it's not just a fuzzer, um, but it's a deterministic fuzzer. And the actual code under test is all deterministic too. So we've designed Tiger Beetle, we've wrote the whole database, everything, consensus, storage engines, all deterministic, um, which is quite rare. 
Um, and then finally, you can speed up time because of this. So what this gives you is all through Interact, you can now you know, drop a little um, simulation and replay it and your colleagues can replay it. And, and you can now fix it in record time because you can fix a decade bug and, and replay a decade in much less time. So uh, let me show you a bit of zip code beyond this. Obviously here we've got the replicas. We now run these all in process on, a, on your dev machine. So you can be coding view stamp replication and trying out you know, funky experimentations on the protocol like we do and just run the simulator locally and it's, you get this incredible feedback loop um, because you test your protocol now for a few years in a short amount of time. So clients are here and we run again the whole cluster. This is the simulator, so this is the main function. And right off the bat, here we've got a, a little 64-bit number called the seed. And from the seed, we derive the whole universe. It all gets like a big bang, you know, from the seed, we, we blow it out and all the, the faults that we're gonna inject, uh, the latencies of things, the distributions of those latencies of faults, millions and millions of combinations of events and everything can be traced back. You know, it's got this family tree genealogy all the way back to the seed and we blow everything up from there. And a different seed gives you a whole universe. So if you drop the seed in Slack, you've given your colleague a whole universe to debug, and they're gonna get the same universe as you, no matter if they're running on Windows or Mac or Linux. Um, so from the seed, we get all the, the uh, probabilities again. Here's our network um, characteristics. Um, and there's a lot that we can do even in how we derive these, but already you're seeing you know, one-way delay in the network links, packet loss, um, even bandwidth is being simulated here for real. And this is real Tiger Beetle code under test. Um, it's not, you know, we're not doing formal modeling of a specification or a protocol. We're actually doing verification of thousands and thousands of lines of real Tiger Beetle code. Um, so this isn't TLA, this is ZIG code, real code that we're simulating and testing. Um, obviously, formal modeling is fantastic if you want to verify your designs before you implement. Um, but at the end of the day, you still need to implement the actual code. I, I mean, you need to actually implement and test the real code, uh, which is what this does. So packet replays, all kinds of partitions. And so far, you know, this is Jepson, uh, which is fantastic. Um, but then this is also Jepson that is deterministic. So you can replay and you can speed up time. Um, but what's really unique here, and this is maybe surprising, you know, time dilation sounds cool and determinism sounds cool. What's really unique to Tiger Beetle here alone, I think, is that most databases have a crash consistency model. What that means is they, it's surprising, I think it's unintuitive, but they really use checksums to recover from torn write after power loss. So just crash consistency. Uh, what they can't really handle is if they try to read from the disk and the firmware sends that read to another sector, which also looks like it has a valid checksum but it's the wrong sector that was read, or you write data and the disk just doesn't write it. How do you recover from these kinds of faults? You know, um, Raft and Paxos, their formal proofs, assume that the disk is perfect. They give you no guidance on what do you do um, if the disk sends your, you know, your F-sync um, data to the wrong place on disk or doesn't do it. So, and that's because the research on how to handle these kinds of faults in the context of a consensus protocol, context of distributed database, this research didn't exist before 2018. So if you were designing, it's not every day that these new databases come around. Um, and we were just lucky because we designed Tiger Beetle after 2018. Um, if you were before, it's very hard to retrofit this, you know, and because you didn't know about it. Um, so it's come out 2018 and we were just lucky that we kind of went back to that paper. It's called Protocol Aware Recovery for Consensus-Based Storage. Uh, one best paper at FAST 2018 from UW Madison, Ram, um, Ram uh, Elagipan and Ashwarya Ganesan uh, with Ramsey Apache de So, Andrea Apache de So. So Protocol Aware Recovery for Consensus-Based Storage. Um, and now we actually test this in the simulator. Um, different read latencies, write latencies, um, and storage faults on the read and write path. Um, finally, uh, because all of this is in process, the simulator, it's, this is not black box. Um, this is real, you know, the simulator controls all the code of the cluster. So if you want, you can replay the simulator, switch on debug logs, and all the logs of the replicas are gonna be beautifully interle interleaved in perfect happens before order, uh, chronological. So you get this 
um, you know, this, this perfect consistent set of one log across the whole cluster. And you can see all the different replicas and clients. Um, but also the simulator can check state as the state transitions happen at each replica. So normally like Jepson is, what they do is incredible. The algorithms that go into checking consistency, into checking linearizability, strict linearizability. It's incredibly hard to do. Actually, people don't know this if you're testing a black box because the clients have to observe the events and afterwards try and reconstruct what could be valid histories based on the inputs, you know, the client requests. But doing that is incredibly expensive and complicated. And there's amazing optimizations that Jepson has done. It's still an extremely hard problem. So kudos to Jepson for solving it. But if you have a simulator that controls the whole universe like this, it, the problem becomes a lot easier because you can see the transitions as they happen, whether the client can observe it or not. So, you know, replicas in the cluster might do something that no one can observe, but the simulator can check it. Um, it can even check cache coherency with the disk, you know, like if sync gate is the, is the page cache always perfectly lockstep with what's on disk. Simulator can check and do all kinds of verification like this. So incredibly powerful. This also just means that if you have bugs, you're going to find them quicker and, and save a lot of debugging time because the simulator is going to tell you, look, you just got a crash co you know, coherency bug. So here's how we check state uh, for strict serializability, how we verify linearizability um, consistency. Obviously, strict serializability is a little bit more than only linearizability. It's got to do with the idea of transactions across multiple objects. So it's the highest level that Tiger Beetle gives. And we check this now, um, is the replica reaching a new state that the cluster has maybe reached in the past, then it's valid. Otherwise, literally, you know, again, the simulator knows these are the client requests that are in flight as this replica is advancing to a new state. The old state of the replica plus one of these client requests gets you to a valid state. Great. Otherwise, the simulator, this is not just random fuzzing with a, a crash. The simulator is going to tell you, look, you've got a correctness bug in your consensus protocol, and, and this is why. Um, or you've got an availability liveness bug, you know, the cluster is not making progress. And this is the interesting thing. If we go back to these faults is the faults that the simulator will inject are, you know, we're running protocol aware recovery in Tiger Beetle in implementation of the database. But the simulator is also aware of these protocols. So it's like protocol aware testing. So the simulator will test the system up to the theoretical, theoretical limits you know, of the consensus protocol or the storage engine. It knows how many faults are and combinations of faults there are, and it knows how far it can go. So it can literally push things to the very limit. So there's no place to hide. Um, it's not just random, you know, let's just inject one little disk fault and, and hope, you know, we, we, we maybe tested the right ahead log or we tested some other area. This actually tests everything and right up to the limit. So nowhere to hide. Mach 10, uh, not beyond Mach 10, but just let's do Mach 10. Um, and so that's the simulator. And normally, you know, I would say, well, go and run this at home. And, and that's your homework, you know, go and run the VOPA, which is the name of our simulator. Um, it's called the VOPA. You can run it at the command line, very easy. So if you want to go try it out, go run it for yourself. It's great fun. Try and modify this code. Try and actually put in a bug in our consensus protocol. See if the simulator finds it for you or in the storage engine. Um, and then once you find the bugs, you know, check that you can find it again and again and switch on debug logs and get to experience it for yourself. Um, so I could show you the command line uh, simulator. Um, but what I'm going to do is like just really show you the simulator. So Zig is also interesting. It's not only a language, it's also a tool chain. It's got an incredible tool chain for compiling Zig to Wasm. And it's not just compiling to Wasm, but the Zig Software Foundation are actually investing in their own compiler backends. There's such a huge focus on quality of tool chain, compile times. Uh, it's, it, you don't often see this. Um, and uh, basically, if, if you're working in WASM, you, you should really, I think, take a look at, at SIG. Uh, so what we've done is we've taken this whole simulations, all these Tiger Beetle replicas, and we what we've compiled it to WASM um, because then we can actually run it in a browser for you. So this is this Tiger Beetle simulator. We compiled it to WASM. We put a graphical front end on top so you can literally see it. Uh, and then we, you know, we clamped the different... Um, uh, fault probability. So now you can see Tiger Beetle as a distributed database running in your browser. And uh, this is very easy. There's no faults. 
So let's just run fault-free universe, right? And now you're going to see vStamp replication only as a replication protocol where data comes in from client requests to the primary, primary backs it up on another machine and acts back to the client. It's kind of optimal. You know, there's you can't really improve on vStamp replication like that because that is the most optical. If, if you, you know, for mission critical safety, you can't acknowledge transactions as committed to a client unless you have it on more than one machine because you need to handle faults. Um, so literally this is one round trip just to replicate and back to the client. And that's what you're going to see in City Breeze. Normal replication. Should we give it a shot? I wonder if there's music. Ah, oh, there is. Okay, so here we've got three clients up at the top. In this simulation, we've got five beetles in the cluster. There's a primary. And this specific scenario, the beetles happen to take a little while to start up. So they're all recovering, like power on mode. Okay, there they're on. There's the primary. There's a backup, back to the primary and uh, clients send in requests, primary replicates optimally, efficiently, strict serizability, never came so cheap. And uh, this is cheap. I mean, it's just one round trip to replicate. Um, I think there's a lot of misunderstandings standings around uh, consensus, but it's actually, it's optimal if you require durability. Um, it, there's no more optimal algorithm for durability and strict serizability. Um, so I think let's stop there, right? Okay, let's carry on. Red Desert. So this is sort of Jepson now. We've got process crashes. We're going to crash Tiger Beetles. And we've got, we mess with the network. Uh, we've also got a database professor in the bath there doing a lecture. Uh, if you remember, Andy Pavlo had that famous uh, bathtub lecture. Uh, Ode to Andy. Um, anyway, yeah, you see the partitions falling from the sky like, like they do on the syndicate. Uh, beetles are crashing coming back and we're doing view changes now to elect a new primary. The interesting thing is, you know, Raft would elect random leader as a primary, but you're seeing here like this round robin, it's going around the circle, merry-go-round. Um, and, uh, you know, we can even just crash. And then we watch the, the cluster elect a new, a new beetle as primary there. So view stamp replication, the view, the lead direction is so intuitive. The view number um, is basically, this is how the cluster see who the current primary is. So view number is 20, 21, mod the number of replicas, and that tells you, you know, which, which beetle is the primary. Up is just basically the number of messages that have been replicated, and then how many have been committed, executed through the business logic. Ah, let's do another network partition. Uh, find the primary. It's going to be that one, that one, that one. Obviously, this scenario takes a bit longer because we're injecting massive amounts of chaos. There we go. Oh, and the, you see Tiger Beetle automatically recover from that partition we injected. Maybe we do another one. There we go. And it crashed as well. Okay, there's the new primary. So you can see basically no storage faults in this scenario. And we're doing a lot of, you know, 13% packet losses, extreme packet replays, uh, partitions, and process faults. And that's your Mexican standoff. And again, you know, the simulator is verifying strict serizability through all of this. Uh, I think Carl would love those partitions. Let's stop there. You know, it, it doesn't get worse than this, does it? Okay, radioactive and now this is you know tiger beetle storage fault model so we're going to inject a little bit of corruption you know um okay eight percent corruption on the read path a distribution up to eight percent this is going to be per replica every machine in the cluster is going to get corrupted as they try to read data and as they try to write data so as they write nine, up to nine percent as they read eight percent and if you think about this you know take a step back there are protocols that can't handle this, you know, so we're corrupting all replicas in different places because the simulator is storage fault away. Um, it, it knows these protocols, the simulator knows how far it can push the limit. So, for example, Raft, Raft requires that one of the beetles must always have a perfect log. Otherwise, you've lost the whole cluster. And that's unfortunate because you're paying for durability. You know, what if surely you've got logs and you can stitch them together afterwards and see, well, yes, but I've got quorum 
replication durability why can't we recover you know so that's what tiger beetle does thanks to protocol aware recovery for consensus best storage just how we solve this what was interesting is that there were places where we hadn't implemented the protocol just right and the simulator told us you know it found those cases and says look you're not implementing protocol aware recovery as optimally as you could um so that's red active mode that's tiger beetle this is kind of what's really unique about tiger beetle uh, aside from the fact that we also just love to have a bit of fun and say thank you to people, pay it forward to all the researchers whose work we rely on. And especially, you know, Joey Max who did the art for this game, Fabio Arnold did the game engine, um, the whole team as well. Um, there we are. A lot of people behind Tiger Beetle, it's only a team that, that can do this kind of stuff. Um, pretty amazing to watch it all come together. And then finally, you know, to you watching this, uh, friends, family, um, investors who've backed us, Coil and Amplify Partners, uh, Stefan Thomas, uh, uh, Tiffany Fox, you know, marketing who, who backed the original idea back at Coil of this game, uh, Lenny Price, Natalie Vase, so many people, all the researchers, your names are all here, uh, all our friends, you know, people in the community, you've, the, all of this had to happen, you know, all these people, there would be no Tiger Beetle today. Um, David Lightman, thank you, Deep, uh, Derek, Dominic, uh, amazing supporter of Tiger Beetle, encourages us all the time. Donovan uh, worked with me on the original, you know, Proto Beetle design. Uh, so many people, uh, Hannes, DuckTB, Heidi, Interledger Foundation, Isaac Freund wrote the, the first version of our storage engine. Um, Jamie, who did the cache coherency work in the Vapo. Yeah, thanks to everybody, and I uh, hope you get a higher score than me, by the way. I'm on 13 now. Uh, if you if you can beat me, please, please tweet about it. And uh, finally, thanks to you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, and um, yeah, go run that simulator. Thanks, folks.